Okay, let's get started. So to our, today we're going to talk about graphing, and we've already gone over this a little bit, but we're going to talk about uh, just identifying the four quadrants and where does a coordinate point lie specifically. So if you're going to draw just a coordinate plane, and remember this is the x-axis, the y-axis is the vertical line, the x-axis is the horizontal line, the point of origin is the point zero, zero, which where the two axes meet, and they form four perpendicular angles. So the one thing you need to take away from this is that the upper right corner is the first quadrant, or quadrant one. Now I'm old-fashioned and I use Roman numerals to show my quadrants. You can use a one or whatnot. They go counterclockwise. So to the left of that is quadrant, I can't spell, quadrant two. And I use the Roman numerals. To the bottom left is quadrant three, and I'm just going to use quad now. And then quadrant four. You can use the numbers one, two, three, four if you wish. I like to use Roman numerals. Now in the quadrant run, quadrant one, it's both the x and the y values for the coordinate points are plot positive and positive. So I pick a point here that would be one, two, three, four, positive four, and one, two, three on the y-axis. Both values are positive. So that, you remember in quadrant one, both values are positive. In quadrant two, the x value is negative, and the y value is positive. So any point, any coordinates of any points line in this quadrant, the, the x value is negative and the y value is positive. In quadrant three, they're both what? That's correct. They're both negative. And in quadrant four, the x is positive and the y is negative. Now the only thing that you're going to do is you're going to identify where the points are. So if I ask you, where is point A? You're going to say it's in quadrant two and the coordinates of the point are negative two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Negative two and nine. Oops, I don't know what I did up there, but there we go. So negative two, nine is the coordinates of the point of that, and it's in quadrant two. The only thing that's kind of tricky is if, what if I say, what's the coordinates of that point? What quadrant is it in? It's not in a quadrant. It's on the x-axis. So you would say it lies on the x-axis or it's not in any quadrant. And the coordinates of the point are two, or x is two and y is zero, okay? So if, if a coordinate of a point, if the coordinates of a point lie on one of the axes, it doesn't lie in a quadrant. It's neither or. It's on the x or y axis. All right? So let's go on to what we're talking about now. Next is transformations. Transformations are we use a coordinate plane and we use the four quadrants. And that is an operation that maps or moves the original figure and a geometric figure typically onto a new figure called an image. So it's going to project, it's going to move it. You see a lot of this with animation. That's how they move the, the items in or the, the characters in cartoons and stuff like that way back. Or if you draw on a paper and you move, you know, on every little sheet of paper and then you thumb it, that's a transformation. Well, there are two kinds of transformations. One, there is a translation, and two, there are reflections, translations and reflections. They're very different. The translation does three major things. First of all, it slides. The figure is just going to slide from one area to the next. It's not going to flip. It's not going to turn. It just slides over. That's a, transfer, that's a translation. The image stays the same shape and the same size. So as the figure, the geometric figure, moves slides in any direction, okay, then it doesn't rotate and it doesn't flip. It stays in its exact same location and just moves. If you think about when you're learning how to dance, they just say, okay, you do this, like a box, a square, you know, back and forth. That would be a translation. So the other thing is the same, the image stays the same shape and the same size, and the orientation is the same as the original shape. In other words, it doesn't change anything. It just all moves together. 
There's no turning. A reflection, on the other hand, doesn't just slide, it flips. So the figure actually flips over. And it flips over, over onto the line of the x-axis or the y-axis. When the image flips, it creates the line of symmetry, which means if I fold it up in half, it will meet completely in the same location. My favorite thing to think of is a number line at zero. If we fold the number line up at zero, right, then it mirrors its image. It mirrors itself on the other side. The opposite three and the opposite three is negative three. So it kind of folds over. That would be where it's flipping, and that's a reflection. But again, reflection, the images, while they flip, they stay the same size and shape. The orientation is the orientation is different because the location is not in the same place. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So if you think about it, it's not going to be the same orientation. It's going to look a little different because it flipped. All right. So here we go. In a translation, you, you let's say we, we're going to have we're going to have a, a, a four-sided figure, a four-point figure. The original figures, the coordinates of the point are called A, B, C, and D. When we move those points, those coordinates of the point, to the new location, they're referred to as A prime, because that's the new location or the movement of the translation. Okay? So right now we're talking about translations, just the slides, not the reflections or the flips. We're talking about just sliding a figure. Okay? So it would be A prime, would be the new location of the coordinates of the point A. So if I tell you that, now this gets a little tricky, but it's pretty smart. If I tell you, this is the algebra part. If I describe the translation as four units left and five units up, well, think about four units left is referring to the x-axis. And I'm, we're always thinking about the four, starting from the origin, from the point zero, zero, if I just give you that. So I would say the movement as an ordered pair, whatever they give you, as the movement, you write as an ordered pair. Anything referring to left or right is always the x-axis. Anything talking about up or down is talking about the y-axis. So if we say four units left, to the left of zero would be negative four, and five units up on y would be a positive five. So we write that as an ordered pair a, b. It's not x, y. Because we're not talking, this isn't the coordinates of a point. This is the movement of a translation. The movement of the coordinates of the point. The old point, point A, the original point, when it moves becomes A prime, its new location. A, B, the coordinates of the point A, B as opposed to X, Y, is telling you the movement of the points, of the figure. Sounds like a lot, but just listen. Every point on the figure, so here we got an A, and A is the point negative 5, 6. So A is the point negative 5, 6. It tells us we're going to move right 7 and down 5. So the coordinates of the movement of the point are 7, negative 5. Okay? I'm going to move to the right 7 and then down negative 5. That's what I've done. So I move over 7, and I go down 5. That's A prime is my new location. Well, I can do this mathematically. Okay, now we're going to go back. Here is the formula you need to know. First of all, you need to identify the coordinates of the point A, B for the movement of the translation. And you're going to be giving it to it in the verbal description. You have to convert it to a point, coordinates of a point, but the coordinates of the point for A, B, not X, Y. Because x, y represents a coordinate point. This represents movement in relation to a, b, the coordinates of the point a, b. You're moving in a translation. So it tells me for every point, x, y, the coordinates of the point, so that would be, ouch, that would be this point a. This is the coordinates of the four points for this figure, OK? So that's the point x, y. That would be A, 
and then the four, B, C, D with their coordinates on it. Well, if you take that and you add it to the image, let me move this down so you can see it. To move it to the new image, I'm going to take the coordinates of the original points of the figure, the geometric figure, and I'm going to add the coordinates of movement to get my, my point prime, my, my, move, my new location of my points. So this is x and y, the coordinates of the point. And then a and b, this is x, the p prime, represents the new coordinates of x plus a. So I'm going to take the value of the coordinate of the x value coordinate, and I'm going to add the movement to it. This makes more sense in a second. And then my second point, my y coordinate, would be the y coordinate, the old y or the original y coordinate, plus the movement of b. That's a mouthful. But if you can remember this, I'm going to add a to x, the x coordinate, and b to the y coordinate. And remember, I'm creating the translation of movement. So here we go. So my figure is I'm going to move right 7 and down 5. Here are the original coordinate points, a, b, c, d. Negative 5, 6, negative 1, 6, negative 1, 3, negative 5, 3. My translation is I'm moving right 7 and down 5. That means every, this point's going to move 7 and down 5. This point's going to move 7 and down 5. So the figure, excuse me, oh, it broke. I'll get that moment. So the figure doesn't rotate. It slides over. It maintains the same shape and size, and the orientation is the same. See how it's still relative in the same area? It didn't change really the orientation of where it is on the graph. It's moving and it's sliding, but it doesn't look differently. So here we go. So here's the formula, P prime for the coordinates of the point x plus a and y plus b. Well, this is a, let's, um, that's the thing, good, speak red. This is the a and this is the b, right? So I go negative 5 plus 7, that's the x coordinate plus the a. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2. Then I go 6 plus a negative 5 is 1. That's my a prime. That's my new location. I can do all this mathematically without drawing anything. And all I do is I add 7 because that's the movement right for my translation to every x coordinate of all four points. That gives me the new location of my figure. And I add the b to the y coordinates because it's moving up or down. And this is my new location. If you stop the video and think about that, you could do all the math without ever drawing anything. Or we could count and move it over, but sometimes you don't have the time for that. Okay? Reflections are a little bit easier. Reflections mirror each other, so they flip. They don't rotate, they just flip over. Here it is over the x-axis. So here's a figure right? Quadrilateral. And notice that right here, the x is 3, 1. The point here is 3, 1. The point here is 7, 1. When I go over, when I go inside, the point here is 6, 4, and the point here is 5, 4. When I flip the figure over the x-axis, the line of symmetry, you always have a line of symmetry. Like, think about the number line folding in half. Zero creates the line of symmetry where it crosses over. Well, the line of symmetry over the x-axis is when the figure flips over below or flips above. And if you notice, the x-coordinates are the same and the y-coordinates are opposite. So here we go. We have 3, 1, and 7, 1. The figure flips. The x-coordinates are the same. 3 and 7, but the y coordinates are opposite because it goes below. That makes sense. So it's 3, negative 1, and 7, negative 1. The same goes true for above. But I think I miscounted here. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Go. That should be what? The x is 1, 2, 3, 4. The x is 4. That's a mistake right there. That's 4, 4, 
four, not five four. I knew I'd made a mistake, but at least I can correct this one. Okay, so the x's are the same here, four and four, six and six for the x. The difference is, is that the y coordinates, the y values of the coordinates are opposite. And it makes sense if you stop to think about it. So you can figure that out. If I ask you it flips, I'll work with the line of symmetry of the x-axis. You should be able to tell me the new coordinates of the figure, of the reflection, without drawing it. Because the x values will remain the same of the coordinates, and the y coordinates will become the opposite. And that's over the line of symmetry over the x-axis, when the figure flips from here to here. Well, what do you think happens when the figure, figure flips over the y-axis, and the y-axis becomes the line of symmetry? What do you think happened? That's right. The y coordinates all stay the same, and the x coordinates all take on the opposite value. So here we go. So the line of symmetry, I'm moving from the right to the left. And my x's, you can see my y's are going to stay the same because it stays in the same location, right? So when we go up, we go over 1 for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 for y. When it flips over, it's still 5 for the y coordinate, but the x becomes negative 1. So the line of symmetry, if I tell you the line of symmetry is the y-axis, and I give you the coordinates for the reflection, and I want to know the coordinates for the reflection when it's flipped, for the geometric figure when it's flipped, and it, beco and it becomes a reflection, then all you do is you keep the y coordinates the same value and you take the opposite of the, of the x values. So they become, if they're positive, they become negative. If they're negative, they become positive. And that's it. So read the pages in the book under the section for translations tonight along with this, and that will help you. Write down two things that you've learned and one question you still have. I'm still working out the kinks for this video. I know it's a little sideways, so you got to bear with me. And now I have to exit out of here.